Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Warm welcome to everybody. We're just making sure we're on Facebook Live. Uh, the Wi-Fi from here to the church kept intermittently going back and forth and failed. So I just took it off Wi-Fi and see if it'll work that way. We're grateful to gather here in the parking lot or online virtually. Grateful to our uh, reopening team for their willingness to uh, be flexible in making our worship uh, an outdoor opportunity for us, uh, as well as we're grateful that it uh, it's not raining. Uh, we wish it would rain out west, and so we do pray for those. There is ELCA emergency relief opportunity on the ELCA website. Uh, if you'd like to go directly there to help uh, with any financial donations directly through the ELCA to ELCA disaster relief, you're welcome to participate that way. Today we formally welcome our new intern, Dana Weltzine. Yay! Welcome. Last week it was a baptismal welcome uh, with the rain, and we say hi to Tim as well. Say hi, Tim. You look familiar. I think it's the beard. And I think you're, you reflect a little bit more than I do. I'm grateful for that. Uh, also, then, final after services today, after finalized, you'll be invited uh, and directed where to go for the walk-through reception. Uh, if you're staying in your cars, intern Dana will come out to the car uh, from a distance and greet you before she goes over there. So if you're staying in your car, just know that uh, she will walk past your car to bring you a greeting this morning. Uh, and then after the walk-through uh, reception for our intern, uh, there will be the around the chairs uh, in the back of the church, and you'll be directed where to go for that at 11 o'clock. Today, as we gather a few other announcements, um, you should know that on Tuesday, Katie's Cup's having a conversation on policing for policing for safety for all. Uh, that's at noon, and that's on Zoom. You can go to their website or Facebook page to get the code for that. Uh, there's the Zion Outreach Board at noon on Tuesday as well. And also on Tuesday, we are having a mobile food truck at First Lutheran Church. If you still want to volunteer to help with that, please let me know. We need a few more volunteers for that. And then Tuesday night, uh, I'm doing a Katie's Cup Campfire Sing-Along on Facebook Live. So you're welcome to join us if you'd like to for that. On Wednesday, the Midtown Lutheran Parish is having a continued conversation on race. And Charmaine and Janice, members of Zion, are going to be the featured uh, sh sharing of their stories. So you're welcome to, to join us on Facebook Live, I mean on Zoom for that on Wednesday. Our Midtown Market continues next Saturday. Uh, we did cancel it yesterday due to rain, but this Saturday looks like it'll be nice. So we gather for worship, so I invite you to turn to your bulletin. And if you want to stand, you are welcome to as we begin. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated as we sing our song, Blessed Assurance.
Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This, this is, is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight. Visions of rapture not boast on my sight. Angels descending bring from above. Echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, always at rest. I am my Savior, I'm happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above. Filled with His goodness, lost in His love. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh Lord God, merciful judge, you are the inexhaustible fountain of forgiveness. Replace our hearts of stone with hearts that love and adore you, that we may delight in doing your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And all that is within me, bless God's holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And forget not all God's benefits. Who forgives all your sins. And heals all your diseases. Who redeems your life from the grave. And crowns you with steadfast love and mercy. Who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like an eagle's. O Lord, you provide vindication and justice for all who are oppressed. You made known your ways to Moses and your works to the children of Israel. Lord, you are full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. You will not always accuse us, nor will you keep your anger forever. You have not dealt with us according to our sins, nor repaid us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is your steadfast love for those who fear you. As far as the east is from the west, so far have you removed our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion for his children, so you have compassion for those who fear you, O Lord. The second reading is from Romans chapter 14. Welcome those who are weak in faith, but not for the purpose of quarreling over opinions. Some believe in eating anything, while the weak eat only vegetables. Those who eat must not despise those who abstain. And those who abstain must not pass judgment on those who eat, for God has welcomed them. Who are you to pass judgment on servants of another? It is before their own Lord that they stand or fall, and they will be upheld, for the Lord is able to make them stand. Some judge one day to be better than another, while others judge all days to be alike. Let all be fully convinced in their own minds. Those who observe the day observe it in honor of the Lord. Also those who eat, eat in honor of the Lord. 
since they give thanks to God, while those who abstain, abstain in honor of the Lord and give thanks to God. We do not live to ourselves, and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. Why do you pass judgment on your brother or sister? Or you, why do you despise your brother or sister? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall give praise to God. So then, each of us will be accountable to God. Word of God, word of life. Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 18th chapter, invite you to stand if you're able. Peter came and said to Jesus, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you, 77 times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. And as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold together with his wife and children and all his possessions and payment be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him saying, have patience with me and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the lord of this slave released him and forgave him the debt. But the same slave, as he went out, came upon another fellow slave who owed him a hundred denarii, and seizing him by the throat, he said, Pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went, threw him into prison until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to the Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he could pay the debt. So my heavenly Father will do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. The Gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. And the Lord will hand you over and torture you until you can pay the debt. Well, how long is that going to take you? A long time. Um, I'd like to use this parable with Illinois Facility Fund and the $1.9 million debt that Patriots has and, and plead for mercy but I think they're not going to throw us into prison until we pay. But it just feels like prison uh, until we can pay that debt off. Debts. How much do you owe? How much can you afford to pay back? Today we talk about forgive us our debts as we forgive those who, we, who are indebted to us. Forgive us our sins. Forgive us our trespasses. This seems to be a big part of the Christian faith. Can you imagine anybody who says, I'm a Christian and I don't need to ask for forgiveness? Never have? Hmm. Not quite sure what you call that person. Today we gather and we recognize the first thing we do in Christian community is we ask for forgiveness when we gather for worship. We do this collectively. We do this communally. We do this privately in our own hearts. We do this because we recognize the reality of human community. When Peter asked Jesus, you know, if a member of the church sins against me, it should be again more like when, because we recognize the reality of our human sin. In this chapter in Matthew, Jesus had already said 
to Peter and the disciples how to handle conflict with other people or how to handle the need to confess and restore relationships, which is the intent of what forgiveness is. Forgiveness its intent is to restore relationships and community so that people can walk together. So Peter asks Jesus now, if a member of the church sins against me, how often must I forgive? Now you have to recognize that in the rabbinic tradition, there was a sense that three times for perhaps a particular same sin, trespass, was sort of the good law, good ideas. It's not just once, not just twice, but three times. You know, it's fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. I don't remember. It's a, you feel foolish maybe when you're offering forgiveness or apologizing, but it's a part of our Christian community. But Peter says, not just three times, he says seven times. Peter's like demonstrating, yeah, I can really offer somebody forgiveness if I do it seven times. He's trying to prove himself. How often should we forgive the intern for not knowing which key goes in which door? Oh, you're going to not know a lot of those things. And it's not about those things being most important. Or how often are you going to forgive your supervisor for assuming you, he told you something that you, you should do or know how to put a silly speaker up or something like that? We always offer one another forgiveness in community because we know it's not just if, but when we make mistakes. Jesus says to Peter, not just seven times, but 77 times. So many times, basically, that it's not about a legal recognition about how often do I have to keep track, but a spirit, a spirit of forgiveness. Jesus is trying to teach the church that we must have the spirit that is willing to forgive. Now, there is a misnomer with forgiveness that means you just keep letting people do stupid things, sinful things, and you don't try to restore the relationship in a manner that brings health and wholeness to one another. That there's a requirement for truth-telling, an honest assessment of what happened, and how and what and which, in, in what way can relationship not only be healed of the brokenness, but restored in the sense of wholeness. We know that you can forgive somebody even if they don't apologize. You can forgive somebody even if they're not alive anymore. You can release the desire for revenge or for the feeling of bitterness on your own without them asking for it. The reality is we trespass against one another in all sorts of ways. There's many times we don't even know we've hurt somebody's feelings or somebody is harmed by something and yet we're so grateful and I'm so grateful that I receive forgiveness from other people that in the midst of the last six months there have been things we've done or left undone and yet you offer forgiveness for me and for one another we know that during this difficult time we have had to adjust and adapt to our life in faith and in service to one another and we recognize the need to offer forgiveness as a sign of the Christian faith. So that not only do we find healing in our relationships and our relationship with God, but we can then move toward the re restoration of broken relationships. That we can move toward not only the truth-telling of what's happened, but also the peace and love that we share with one another in order to build up the kingdom of God. In order for people to know God's grace and mercy through Christ, despite us and through us. And that as we gather as a Christian community, we know that we receive the mercy and grace of Jesus Christ for all the things we've done and all the things we've left undone. And that God's grace and mercy is indeed the central part of what we gather for. To know God's forgiveness for we cannot pay back the debt that, that God has given to us in, in Jesus' death and resurrection. But that liberates us to demonstrate that love and mercy to others. Not just to offer forgiveness and receive forgiveness, but to seek the restoration and healing of relationships.
This is what God's grace calls us into. A communal life of forgiving people that's willing to turn again to Christ, knowing that's the only place we can ultimately receive grace and mercy that liberates us from whatever has happened, that we can come back to this table, even if we're socially distanced, and see and receive and share and celebrate this forgiving mercy that God gives to us. God's grace is amazing. Thanks be to God. Amen. now going to have our service of new beginning for our new intern. The scripture reminds us there are many different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same spirit gives them. There are many ways of serving, but the same God gives to everyone ability for particular service. The spirit's presence is shown in some way in each person for the good of all. Thanks be to God. Through the work of the Holy Spirit, we gather now to give thanks for the call of those who are called to be pastors. We thank God for seminaries and congregations that walk together in this journey toward ordination. Thanks be to God. It is the task of the intern under the direction of the supervising pastor to be fully involved in the life and work of ministry in this congregation so that you may obtain experience in the practice of pastoral ministry. You are a learning colleague in this ministry and therefore I ask you, Dana Weltzine, are you willing to assume your partnership in ministry here? And will you seek God's guidance to fulfill that ministry to God's glory? If so, answer, I am ready. May God help and empower me in this ministry. 
I am ready. May God help and empower me in this ministry. It is your opportunity, members of Zion, to accept the intern as a worker within our congregational ministry, to invite and welcome intern Dana into your homes, uh, socially distanced, <laughs> and in every way strengthen and encourage her in this year of service. Therefore, now I ask you, will you receive this servant of God as a laborer in the gospel of Christ and uphold and support in turn Dana in every way? If so, answer, yes, with God's help. Yes, with God's help. <laughs> Amen. Almighty God, by whose call we are at work, bless and empower you in ministry together. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray for our intern. Almighty God, we ask you to bless this new relationship between intern Dana and Zion. Send your Holy Spirit to those who labor in the, In your love and service, grant us your power and wisdom, steadfastness of faith and hope for all good things. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And let us also welcome Tim. Hi, Tim. <laughs> let us welcome intern Dana as our new intern. Yay! Speech. <laughs> we'll save that for another time. Save that for another time. <laughs> At this time, let us gather now and let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. We pray for your holy Catholic Church, O Lord, that it may be filled with truth and love. We pray that all bishops and pastors and interns may fulfill their ministry call. Lord, in your ministry, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for intern Dana that she may equip the saints to be a caring church in a changing community that shares the grace of Christ. We pray that pastoral intern Dana would know your love, rest, and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who do not believe and for those who have lost their faith, that they may receive the love of Jesus and find renewal. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for the poor, the persecuted, the sick, the lonely, and all who suffer, that they be, re they be relieved and protected. We pray especially for Lois, for Frank, Mark, Joanne, Daryl, Richard, and Yolanda. We also pray for those suffering amid the raging fires. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for the glorious company of saints, for those who have died in faith and those who live in certain hope. We praise you that their witness may give us courage until the day of Jesus Christ. We pray especially for the relatives of Bob Lenhard. We pray for those we name out loud or in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our Hear. prayer. We pray for the children of our community as a new year of school and learning has begun. Be with teachers, support staff, and educators. Guide and guard all public schools, private schools, charter schools, home schools in this year of learning. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Into your hand, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. You're welcome to stay in your seats and, you know, and share peace with one another. Peace. peace. Invite you to take out your communion kits. The spirit is blowing.
In Hebrew, the word for spirit is ruah. Everybody say ruah. We pray the spirit upon us today as we gather. And we remember Jesus when he gathered with his disciples uh, the night before he was crucified and died for our sins. That he took the cup and the bread. He took the bread and if you want to prepare and take the bread out and hold it up. He took the bread and he gave thanks and he said to the disciples, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. The second layer is the, after the bread is the juice. Then he took the cup and he gave thanks and he gave it to the disciples and said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. As often as we eat of this bread and we drink of this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death and resurrection until he comes again. Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. Remembering Jesus' mercy and grace today, let us pray the prayer Jesus taught us together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. God of the welcome table. In this meal, we have feasted on your goodness and have been united by your presence among us. Empower us to go forth sustained by these gifts so that we may share your neighborly love with all. Through Jesus Christ, the giver of abundant life. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
Praise the Lord. We're grateful that God's grace and mercy is here. We invite you to stay seated, and you will be directed as to where to go. So don't go yet, but you can go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.